On February 25, 1957, a college student driving his car along Susquehanna Road, Philadelphia, saw a rabbit rushing into bushes. Knowing that there were animal traps in the area, the man pulled over and went into the woods to investigate. Instead of finding an animal, the man stumbled upon the body of a young boy inside a box. The child had been wrapped in a blanket and his head was sticking out of the box. The man believed the boy was a doll and did not report his find to police. The next day, the man heard a report of a missing girl in the area. Believing it was related, the man finally contacted police. This man, however, was actually not the first person to see the boy. A young man had been checking his muskrat traps in the area when he stumbled upon the remains some time earlier. Fearing that police would confiscate his traps, the man did not report the discovery. The medical examiner noted that the boy had died of blunt force trauma. There were bruises all over his body, suggesting that he had suffered years of horrible abuse. There were also signs of severe malnourishment. The boy's ribs were visible through his skin. The boy had no broken bones, and his hair had been roughly cut, possibly after death, as clumps of hair were found clung to the body. Three surgical scars were present on the body, on the left ankle and groin, as well as a L-shaped scar under the chin. It was concluded that he had died a few days to two weeks prior to being found. The boy is described as white, with a pale complexion, between the ages of three and six. He was three feet to three feet four inches tall, and weighed approximately 30 pounds, with light brown to sandy colour hair, and blue eyes. Police began their investigation. They took the boy's fingerprints, and believed they would quickly determine the identity of the deceased. However, no one had come forward to report the boy missing, and his description did not match any existing missing child reports. The boy's fingerprints had not been registered at any hospital, leading to the speculation that the boy was born at home and never reported. A serial number of the box the boy was found in led investigators to a J.C. Penny store in Upper Derby, Pennsylvania. The cardboard box, which had once contained a bassinet, was sold between December 5, 1956 and February 16, 1957. While just 12 were sold, police were only able to track down eight of the buyers. The case attracted massive media attention. The Philadelphia Inquirer printed 400,000 flyers depicting the boy's likeness, which were sent out and posted across the area, and were included with every gas bill in Philadelphia. Despite these efforts, the boy's identity remained a mystery. Police checked with every hospital, orphanage and foster home in the area and found that every child was accounted for. The woods where the body was found was searched by 270 police academy recruits. Three items that may be linked to the case were discovered. A man's blue corduroy cap, a tan child scarf and a white handkerchief with the letter G in the corner. The cap was traced back to the cellar. The shop owner, Hannah Robbins, stated that the cap had been customised for the man who had purchased it. He was between the ages of 26 to 30 and had blonde hair. Investigators showed the cap and a photo of the boy to hundreds of stores in the area, but none could recall seeing them. While very optimistic at the start, police had hit dead end after dead end, and the case of the boy in the box went cold. One of the most popular theories in the case was that the boy was the child of a mentally challenged girl who lived at a foster home just 1.5 miles away from where the body had been left. It was believed that the death was accidental and the boy was discarded to hide the fact that the girl was an unwed mother. A bassinet that resembled the one sold at Chase A. Penny was later found at the home as well as blankets that were similar to the one the boy had been wrapped in. Despite this promising evidence, it was determined through DNA that the girl was not the boy's mother. Another well-known theory in the case was brought forward in 2002 by a woman known as Martha. The woman claimed that her mother had purchased the boy from his birth parents in 1954. The boy was subjected to severe and sexual abuse, and on one evening he had vomited up his meal of baked beans and was given a horrific beating. He was given a bath during which he died 
These details matched information known only to police, as the coroner had found that the boy's stomach contained the remains of baked beans and that his fingers were water-wrinkled. While this theory also seems promising, police are sceptical due to the woman having a history of mental illness. Neighbours of the woman at the time, who had been inside the home, stated that they had never seen the boy, and dismissed Martha's claims as ridiculous. The identity of the boy in the box remains unknown. It is very likely that the person or persons responsible for his death are now deceased. His fingerprints, DNA, and dental records are available for a comparison. The boy is buried at the Ivy Hill Cemetery in Cedar Brook, Philadelphia. The grave has a large headstone that reads, America's Unknown Child. Residents keep the grave decorated with flowers and stuffed animals.